Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and I'm bringing you a video tutorial on how you can alter the color of a reference photo. Often we get a reference photo that we, you know, we might want a different color palette. So I'm going to talk about that. Uh, and I call this painting perfect piece. I hope you're all having perfect peace. I'm featuring Giro pastels. You can see that box there. Um, this is what is called the Elizabeth Mowry poetic landscape set. I love these pastels. They're very versatile. I love the, the size and the shape of them. I do have a video where I actually give a review on these pastels or, you know, I do a whole painting with them, but these are primarily the ones that I'm going to be using for the painting today, along with some Terry Ludwig's. They work great on the surface I'll be using, which is pastel matte. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to show you the set. And if anyone, Giro pastels are available at like dickblick.com, uh, places like that. But this particular set is not. You'd have to type in that name and you'd, the company would come up where you can purchase it. But anyway, love these pastels. Let's get started. All right, for this particular painting, for the darks, you know, we typically get the darks down first. I'm using Terry Ludwig pastels. I did get their set of intense darks, one and two. Uh, they, you know, a lot of pastels, <clears throat> the good ones anyway, can be pricey, but they are so worth it. Your results are so much better. It's just really one of those things with art that uh, good quality materials do make a difference. Now, that doesn't mean you can't start with medium quality or, you know, just to it, whatever your pocketbook can afford. But when you gradually want to uh, graduate to the better stuff, um, there are certain pastels that definitely are worth the money and Terry Ludwig's and these Giro's are definitely worth it. So what I'm doing here, um, like I said, I'm going to give a little commentary on this one. I give a, a lot of commentary on my Patreon version and it is real time, but you can still learn a lot right here on this video. What I'm doing, you see the reference photo, it's from pmp-art.com and um, I am really changing what's in the reference photo, which is a lot of warmth. We've got a lot of green and we've got a lot of yellow and the sky and the distant mountain or tree or whatever some of that is, is kind of a, uh, almost like a cloudy overcast. Um, even though the photo's bright, it's kind of a gray white in the background. So what I decided to do is almost like an analogous color palette, but I'm doing a very wide analogous color palette. Um, if you want to get yourself, if you have one already, that's great, but get a color wheel, little pocket color wheel. They're very inexpensive and notice what a wealth of information is on the color wheel and on the back. Well, with whichever one's the front or the back on one side of it, it's got the descriptions of what uh, different color palettes are. There's monochromatic, which is basically doing a painting all in like purples, every value of purple, uh, analogous color is using colors that are adjacent to each other on the color wheel. So what I've kind of done is I've worked with um, the primary theme of maybe like a violet magenta, um, and I'm kind of going a little wider than that to some of the blues, um, teal blues, and some pinks. And um, so, you know, I definitely was able to really do this rather easily. I know sometimes I'm, people talk about this a lot. That's a common question I get is how do I change a color palette? How do you pick out your colors? How do you know what colors to pick if you're doing that? Why wouldn't you have just painted that green and yellow? Lots of questions like this. And um, sometimes I just want to change the mood and you can definitely do that with more of the blues and these, these uh, soothing colors to me. I just really like these colors. They feel peaceful. Um, that's why I called it perfect peace. Uh, so, um, basically, uh, also too, I want to talk a little bit about the paper. This is the pastel matte. I bought a pad of pastel matte paper. I really love, it's not super sanded like, um, UART paper. As a matter of fact, it, it feels rather smooth. It almost feels like suede or something, but it does take a lot of layers. It works beautifully with these Giro pastels, or I should say these Giro pastels work beautifully on the pastel matte. And uh, I also find that on this particular painting, just so you know, I didn't do any blending other than letting the pastels blend themselves. I really feel you don't need to do as much blending. You can, and I've done that before on pastel mat. Um, but, you know, in a lot of other works, when I work on UART paper, I'll use the typical pipe foam insulation blending method just to kind of fill in all those little spaces you get using UART paper because it is so sanded. Um, and you don't even have to blend on that either. But 
uh, I find that you have to do it even less on this paper because it, it just kind of goes on a little bit more uniform. Uh, you see in the sky, obviously there are still some spaces, but trust me, uh, as you layer color, all of that kind of just blends together and looks nice. Now, I'm using a pastel here that if I was to use this particular color, it's kind of like a taupe color, on a cream colored piece of UART, uh, it would appear dark. But because I'm working on, there's the pastel again, on a dark paper, it appears light. So if you don't understand value a lot, you'd like to learn a little bit more, I have a video. I'll try to make it the featured video at the end of this if you want to look at it. it's I think it's called value, understanding value, I think. Um, and value, really value doesn't have any value until you put it on something or next to something. It's very uh, determined on what it's what it's on or what it's next to. So um, I find that when you work with the darker papers, values you would typically think of as dark end up looking lighter. So you really just see it as you apply it kind of a method, you know. So um, that's a very interesting aspect about working on darker papers. All right, so I'm going to let you guys just enjoy this. I wanted to share with you a little bit about what surface I was working on. I do love the pastel mat. This is a five by five size, and it's part of the series I'm doing for my patrons called the 12 Days of Healing. I'm inviting my patrons to paint with me for 12 days. This is painting number eight, I think, and um, everyone who paints from these lessons, and they're mostly getting the fuller uh, version lessons. They're sharing it. We're all sharing it in a album, a shared uh, album I have on Google. And uh, it's nice for me to just see what everybody else is doing and other people commenting. So it's a really fun, fun group, fun place. Um, of course, there's always, even though the Patreon page is $5 a month and you can cancel at any time, um, you, if, if that's even a lot, I know right now our world is crazy, uh, you can always do the Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook. It's a private group. You have to ask to join, just to answer a couple of questions. And you can get so many of your questions answered um, by so many artists that are all helping each other. It's a beautiful place, almost 10,000 members in that group. Um, but my Patreon group is a little bit more intimate. I get, obviously, because there's less people, I get to spend more time um, communicating with you guys and working together. Um, I really like the phase of this painting at this point. I mean, it would have been nice if I had just kept it a really, a more limited analogous color palette instead of branching out into the pinks like I do later. Um, but this was a, a pleasing little painting for me. I got up early in the morning to work on it. And um, I've, I've got to finish this video, get everything taken care of, because I've got to start now painting number nine in the 12 Days of Healing and get that shared with you guys as well. All right, enjoy this process. Please try it. Uh, if you do, uh, if you're in the Monet Cafe art group, share it on there. If you're a patron of mine, share it in our shared Google album. And I can't wait to see what you do. And I pray everyone is blessed. Please hang out. Oh, also, I never say this. I always forget. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate that. It, having more Google subscribers, I'm sorry, YouTube subscribers really does help uh, my YouTube channel. So I appreciate it. Like this video, comment if you like, and come back often. Uh, hang out till the end, um, and I'll be bringing you more art lessons soon.
I'm finishing it up at this point and I really enjoyed doing this little painting. You may have seen at the beginning I was working from my dining room table literally because my studio has so many pastels and things all over the place from doing so many of these challenge paintings each day. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you'll try it. I'll have more free art lessons coming your way and if you'd like to become a patron you can just click the link at the end of this video. Happy painting everyone!